Welcome to Entanglement Radio, transcendent talk for the conscious mind. Join us for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science, new thought, and conscious healing. Explore the potential and infinite possibilities of what it means to be human with some of the best guests in radio. At Entanglement Radio, it is all connected. Now, here is your host, Angela Levesque, on the OM Times Radio Network. Day and welcome to Entanglement Radio. I am your host, Angela Levesque. I'm coming to you live this this beautiful morning from uh, the beautiful foothills in Boise, Idaho. Uh, my first show. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited. I have an amazing guest for you today, uh, Dr. Tammy Belashevsky, and she is the author of Manifesting Love from the Inside Out, as well as Manifesting Prosperity from the Inside Out. And that is what we are talking about today, how to have a prosperous 2015. I know that personally, that is my intention for the year. So I, uh, in fact, am so excited to be talking about this. Next week, we have Dr. Elliot Maynard on, and he is a futurist. And we are going to be talking about uh, the current uh, limitations of our scientific paradigm and what the future human will look like once we embrace a more quantum view of the world, so understanding the primacy of consciousness. So tune in for that. I did have a dry run week last week where I had another amazing guest, uh, Kimberly Truitt, and we talked all about creating soul-based intentions. So that is in the archive. But today is the first live show, and so I am just so excited to be here. If you need to get a hold of me at any time during the week, you can email me at Angela at HestiaHealth.com. You can find me on Facebook and on Twitter at Hestia Health. And I just want to put out huge, huge, big love and gratitude for everyone, um, all those amazing people at Ohm Times Magazine and Ohm Times Radio for making this happen. I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. And I just huge, huge thank you and much love to all of you out there. You know who you are. So let's get... First of all, I just I want to do since this is the first show and I have a perfect story about my guest tonight. Uh, you might be asking yourself why Entanglement Radio? What is the name? And uh, I just want to tell you a little story that sort of exemplifies this perfectly. About three or four years ago, my girlfriend was standing in line at a coffee shop, and my guest Tom uh, Tammy Belashevsky was was standing beside behind her and. Just out of random act of kindness, she bought my friend a coffee. And so that started a conversation, and, and she found out that she was a, a mandala facilitator, and she had an upcoming workshop. So then my girlfriend goes to me, saying, knowing that I love mandalas, saying, I met this woman, and she bought me this coffee. And, you know, it was so amazing, and that was at a point in her life where she really needed to be a recipient of a random act of kindness. So through that, I went and I have um, been a participant in my guest workshops. I have been a client, and I've also worked side by side her facilitating one of the workshops. And I just got to say uh, that... Through this random act of kindness, I have met friends of hers that are still friends to this day. I met a healer who totally rocked my world and <laughs> changed the very foundation from which I see the world. And so I just want to remind you that you just never know when you throw that pebble in the pond just what sort of effect it has. So a $3 coffee and an act of kindness, and she has touched lives all over the place, not to mention through her work and her books and all of that. But you just never know because we are all connected. And that is sort of uh, the whole point of Entanglement Radio. So with that, and I'm sure there's many uh, threads of that connection uh, that we're talking about in prosperity today. So uh, I'm excited to get to that. So let's do it. Uh, my guest, Dr. Tammy Balashevsky, is an ordained minister. She holds two PhDs. She's a counselor, author, artist, art for healing instructor, mandala facilitator, and certified hypnotherapist. Tammy is an 
international best-selling author. Her first book, Manifesting Love from the Inside Out, and her second book, Manifesting Prosperity from the Inside Out, was released in 2014. Both of her books are based on sound, spiritual, psychological principles, as well as her own experience and success stories of her clients. Dr. Tammy says it's time to claim our personal power. We have derived our sense of self from others, looking to the world for a sense of safety, and in this we will never truly be happy or at peace. Tammy's teachings bring her audience welcome, comprehensive, practical guidance for mastering essential life skills and in claiming the love and life that everyone desires and deserves. So with that, I feel incredibly honored and blessed to welcome Dr. Tammy Belashevsky to the program. Angela, I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me. I didn't know that story. I know. Well, that's what, you know, that's what it's all about is that you just, and like I said, you offered, bought that, that my girlfriend a coffee at a time where she just really needed that act of kindness. And like you just, you just never know when you throw that pebble in the pond, how it's going to affect people. Yeah, I had no idea. I mean, you feel like soul family to me. It feels like I've always known you, but I didn't know exactly how we connected. So it's interesting to get that bit of backstory. Yes. And like I said, that that same spirit, that same source, that field of consciousness that that intertwines all of us, that is also part of uh, the prosperity consciousness, isn't it? It really is. I mean, true prosperity, I call it divine prosperity, comes from that connection to something greater. It's not relying on our own understanding or our ego, you know, edging God out. It's about really being aligned, and I call it ego, inviting God only. The same energy that moves the planets around the sun can take care of us and our prosperity and our finances, but we have to set the intention. We have to invite it in. So your books, you have the subtitle of both your books, From the Inside Out. And I think, you know, we touched on it briefly as I was reading your bio there, but why is it so important that it has to begin on the inside of us? Well, I think there's two ways we can live our lives, from the outside in or from the inside out. When we live from the outside in, that is ego-based. That is dancing for the mirror. It is... uh, trying to manipulate an illusion. And even if you get what you want for a little while, it's not sustaining, it's not long lasting, and it's also fear-based. We wanna work from the inside out. We wanna take personal responsibility for our connection with that something greater, and then look to what's going on in our lives as a reflection, as a mirror, as feedback. Buddha says there is no out there. The out there is Maya, it's illusion. So we can get really consumed by that. That's kind of a natural propensity. But the true truth is it is a reflection of our inner state, of our thoughts, our beliefs, what we unconsciously, subconsciously believe we deserve. So when we work on those inner states, the outer reality shifts and morphs around that. And that is creating our life in an empowered way. Mm, I love that. So um, as I mentioned at the beginning that this year, so every year at the beginning of January, I kind of set an intention and I couldn't use the word prosperity before. And even I have done a lot of work and I've worked with you and I've done a lot of inside work like you were just talking about. Uh, to understand my my thoughts on money, but it was so funny. In previous years, I wanted to ask for prosperity, but there was something about that word. I was like, maybe I should use the word abundance because maybe the word prosperity is too is too greedy. It's it's you know too selfish. Mm-hmm. And this year, I said, you know what? Screw it. It's going to be <laughs> prosperous. But where where does that come from? Well, I see you as a very noble and humble soul. And this was my story too, Angela, so I can really relate. And I know a lot of the people listening can as well. It's like, I want to be of service. I want to be humble. I'm going to stay in my humility. And on the other side of that, as I really explored it, was wanting to be small because I don't want to get big for my britches. I don't want to go ego. I've been around a lot of people that ended up manifesting a great deal of, of success and fame. And I saw them go ego. And there was some part of my subconscious mind that said, that will never happen to me. And so I made sure that it didn't because I struggled so much financially. It kept me very small. And the most of us hear those things like it's easier for um, 
you know, to go through an eye of a needle than get to heaven, you know, if you're rich. So things like that can really program our subconscious mind. And then, of course, the things we hear when we're young about money. Most of us heard some things around money and prosperity that were not positive and glowing when we were in those deeper brainwave states of delta and theta when we're very, very young. And that can program the very foundation and fabric of our lives that we're building the rest of our lives on. And We may not remember the details, but it really does set that vehicle navigation system for where we're going to go in our lives until we decide, just like you've done this month, Angela, to take <laughs> personal responsibility and set a very different intention and now the universe can conspire to support you and I intend to support you as well <laughs> <laughs> well that is awesome because I know that um, I had worked with you this has been a, a reoccurring theme so I had worked with you I don't know a few years ago and it's so interesting because you think that you know you get to a point where there's like layers and i i felt that i'd like had this breakthrough which i absolutely did and then it's interesting because is it my subconscious that kind of takes me back to that place and then i realize that there's more releasing and aligning that i need to do well there's always going to be layers growth rarely or maybe never occurs in a straight line it's more like cycles and circles and waves you could think of a layer of an onion you know, and it's not even safe. You know, it'd be like trying to put 220 through 110 if you're dealing with electricity. It's not even safe to go in that straight line. You want to evolve as a process and a journey, not an event and a destination. So often people go, oh, I thought I healed this. Well, you've gone to a deeper level. You're cycling around and you may see patterns and it is going to be an evolution. Transformation is and evolution and even with prosperity I've been working on this for 10 plus years and I feel like I hit a glass ceiling and then I go higher and I hit a glass ceiling and I feel that discomfort and I'm like really this again and then I break through and I go higher so rather than having challenges accepting a three dollar cup of coffee I'm having challenges accepting you know three thousand dollars for a painting or you know, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to stop you there. We're up on a break, but we'll get back to that here when we return on Entanglement Radio with uh, Dr. Tammy Balashevsky. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. The Conscious Parenting Radio Show provides inspiration and resources for loving, empowering, and respecting your children and yourself. Join me, Timothy, every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time as we consciously explore proven ways of living together in happiness, health, and harmony. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Katrina Kavanagh, host of the I Am Wisdom radio show. I Am Wisdom is about the connection between mind work and energy work, spirituality and living a wonderful life. Looking forward to sharing each Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with you. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, I Om FM. All right, we are back, and you're listening to Entanglement Radio with Angela Levesque. My wonderful guest tonight is, or today, is Dr. Tammy Balashevsky, and she is a relationship and prosperity expert, and we are talking all about uh, the foundations of her book, Manifesting Prosperity from the Inside Out. So, uh, Tammy, before the break, and I apologize, I had to cut you off, you were talking about being able to receive the $3 coffee versus... Yes 
you know, $3,000 for your painting. And isn't that a huge part of it, being able to feel worthy enough to receive? That's exactly it, Angela. I say true prosperity is like breathing. You exhale, you inhale, you give generously, you receive graciously. And when I was struggling so deeply with my finances, I was meditating about it and I'm like, what's going on? Why can't I uh, find a job that I like? Why can't I attract abundance? And what I heard so clearly was that um, you can't even receive a compliment without pushing it away. You can't receive graciously a lunch from a friend. How do you expect to manifest the riches of the universe? And so my homework became learning to say, why thank you? That's so kind and generous of you. And as I've said that, I've had to continue to stretch into that. And it was hard. It was really uncomfortable because there is a there was a deep part of me that didn't feel worthy of kindness, of sweetness, of generosity and prosperity. And we can only manifest what we deeply, subconsciously believe we deserve. Our subconscious mind dictates how much money we make. It dictates the quality of relationships we're in. So learning to expand my worthiness by learning to just say thank you and relax, open my heart and receive graciously was a very important and powerful first step in starting to attract prosperity. Hmm. Um, you give it a really neat example about, uh, you know, how we converse with the universe. <laughs> and you talk about this idea of accelerating and then breaking and accelerating and breaking and how that that just doesn't really serve us in, in um, manifesting our desires. Can you explain that? Well, yeah, the foot on the brakes and the accelerate at the same time, it isn't very effective in getting to our destination, be it a park or, you know, some, a friend's house or prosperity. We want to be consistent. And what I say all the time, and it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, you don't necessarily want to put it in overdrive. You want to crawl, you want to walk, you want to run, and then you want to fly. You don't want to go from sitting in a deep hole to just flying. It's unstable. It's scary. You know, it, it, it's alarming. You want to be able to take solid, steady steps in the direction of your dream. And you want to be consistent. You want to create a prosperity practice. It'd be sort of like, you know, wanting to get fit. You know what? I'm setting an intention to get fit this year. And you go to the gym. You don't want to do a six-hour workout (laughs) after not having worked out for maybe two or three years or ever in your life. You want to go in and you want to start slowly. Maybe work out 10 minutes and then the next day maybe work out 15 and then maybe take a day off and then work a half hour. And you want to keep building on that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. (laughs) Because it it seems to me it's hard in this day and age to um, really think that there is enough for everyone. Uh, And, you know, I used to have that as part of you. You talk about the money blueprint. I used to have that as part of my blueprint that if I have uh, something, then somebody else doesn't have it. Or, you know, if they have money, then I can't have money instead of realizing that there's more than enough. So how do we shift into that place? Well, again, I think this comes from aligning with that something greater. For sure, if we're looking at Maya or illusion, it's like you see pie. There's like you have to fight for your piece of the pie. It's a dog-eat-dog world, right? But if we tap into the truer truth, the higher principles, we're all connected to something called infinite creator. Now, the rules of the infinite creator and the universe are going to be 180 degrees away from what we perceive in physical world reality. The Course in Miracles talks about this. So you can buy into one illusion or you could buy into the truth. Buying into one is going to prevent you from buying into the other. So I decided I wanted to work from the inside out. I want to connect with truer truth. I am setting my intention for reality with a capital R. So to me that takes the consistent practice of meditation, of listening to the still small voice within, connecting to the wisdom that's in the very center of myself. And we all have access to that. We can believe what we hear from others or what we see on the news. But from my perspective, I feel much safer, more supported. And I feel I tap into a deeper truth by 
turning inward and listening to that. And some of my most profound revelations have come from that. And the analogy that we have to struggle for our piece of pie was completely dispelled. I heard that you don't even have to settle for apple pie if you want coconut cream pie. And you don't have to settle for a small slice. You can have the whole thing. So this is something that I believe deeply. And I think, again, we all have the capacity and the ability to access these truer truths and the higher uh possibilities of immense prosperity and if people are confused they could also pick up my book because it is a guide it's a guide to walk you through this process because it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to rewire if you will and I'm excited you're claiming that intention because I want to help you and everyone that wants to claim this for themselves because we all have that ability we're all connected to that source of prosperity we just have to want it and then take responsibility for it you use um and it's actually even in your your bio but two very powerful d words deserve and desires Mm -hmm. and again i think that we sometimes have this idea that it's we're selfish if we desire things or you know and and that idea we talked about um, you you get you manifest exactly what you believe you deserve, which is a really really powerful statement. And I think that that is something. Um, even I think before I was able to make this intention for this year, I really had to work on this this little belief that I have to keep knocking out. And I know now when it shows up, but this idea that I'm not enough. And and so as I have done more work on that. That has how it's allowed me to come to this place to say, screw it. I want prosperity this year. <laughs> oh, yes. I can really relate to what you're saying. You know, I, I grew up Catholic, and before we would take communion, we would say, I am not worthy to receive you. And at that point, I took it so deeply that when I would spell my name, I would use a little T rather than a capital T because I'm not important. I want to be humble. I'm not worthy. I really claim that on a very deep level was deeply programming my subconscious mind and what I found is we can't out manifest our subconscious mind we have a saboteur in there that's going to keep us small even if that means keeping us um, broke it's going to keep us safe and so it does really come down to choosing to believe that we do have value Lord, I am worthy to receive you. I am the apple of your eye. I am the child in whom you are well pleased. Relaxing into that space, you're probably going to start seeing winks from the universe and synchronicities and coincidence that starts to let you know this is true. We live on a planet of free will and choice. We get to play with this medium called being human on planet Earth. Mm. We get to set our intentions. That's our desires. Our intentions are our desires and our deservingness is our value and our inherent sense of worthiness. And if we don't like what we're manifesting, we can set different intentions. So we have more power than we think. We are connected to that something greater, but it takes relaxing into that space and wanting to explore and experiment with these notions before our lives can really transform. One thing in my work uh, with you, as well as you know, reading your book, you talked about the saboteur, Um, you have people, you take people through these wonderful meditation experience, guided meditation experiences. And it's interesting to me, for example, when you meet the saboteur, when you're invited to uh, connect with that, that you don't tell them to go away. You actually ask them, what is their purpose for being there? And I think that that is so interesting because they are there to serve you in some way. Is that right? They really are. Yeah. And telling them to go away, it's like, trying to say, you're a bad arm. I'm going to cut off my arm and throw it away. You know, it doesn't work very well. We want to become whole. We want to be truly integrated. So oftentimes I find the saboteur is just a distorted aspect of ourselves that has a really sincere and positive intention. But perhaps it heard things, you know, that money is bad. So it distorts. My saboteur came forward as a nun. So rather than telling her to go away and banish her from my inner kingdom, I said, you know, tell me more. Who are you? What are your deeper intentions? And her deep intentions were to be of service, to be humble, to to take care of people, to, you know, 
be of service to God in the world. And her deep intentions were very important. They were very noble. They were very positive. So if I would have just thrown the baby out with the bathwater, to, so to speak, I would have missed the deeper message. So she and I have had a lot of conversation and she um, now understands that money isn't bad. Money is not the root of all evil. It's this inner conversation. And it's like she has revelations as I have revelations. And now she's morphed and transformed and we have a really fun, happy, healthy, whole relationship, her and other aspects of myself, where we get to tithe, we get to share money, we get to buy coffee for people, we get to be generous because now we are giving from abundance and overflow. I'm not scraping by to pay my bills any longer. I can be generous. I can pick up, you know, lunch or dinner for a friend. I can give presents and it feels good and my nun is no longer at odds with the notion of prosperity. So I've been able to manifest it with more ease. Yes, I, you know, I think that's so important because there's so many parts of us that we think that we should shy away from. And, and, and to hear what you're saying, too, being able to, you tell us a story about your sister. We're almost up on our break here, but um, you tell a story about your sister and how you wanted to spoil her for your, her birthday mm -hmm. and that she needed to be able to relax and release into um, accepting those things. And that is just such an important thing that I want to remind my listeners uh, as we head into the break is that, you know, allow people to give to you. And like you said, accept it graciously. And that's really hard. Like you said, whether it's a compliment, a cup of coffee, or a big lavish dinner, sometimes that's a very, very difficult thing for people. And yes. that's part of the balance. That's part of the energetic balance. When we get back from the break, I want to talk a little bit more about inner child work, a little bit more about meditation and uh, some of the practices that we can do to kind of shift our subconscious so that we can allow that that free flow of money. So we will get to that here. If you want to check out Tammy's website while we are having a conversation, you can go to TammyBPhD.com. That's T-A-M-M-I-B-P-H-D.com. We will be right back on Entanglement Radio right here on IOMFM. Best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the Blue Collar Goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Free your mind with Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om 
All right. Welcome back to Entanglement Radio. I am your host, Angela Levesque. And if you are just joining us, we are talking to relationship and prosperity expert, Dr. Tammy Balashevsky. And uh, yeah, so much of this, we have talked a bit about the subconscious, but I, I really want you to share your iPod analogy on how things kind of uh, just keep replaying in our mind, because I thought that that was so brilliant when I read that. It's a helpful analogy, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so I equate a baby with a brand new iPod. We arrive on planet Earth. We don't have any um, music downloaded. We don't have any material downloaded. We're fresh. We're clean. We're new. We end up in our parents' um, lives and their homes, and they start downloading content onto us, into our subconscious mind, onto this iPod. So as we get older, we're playing music. We're playing uh, material we're sharing whatever we've had downloaded onto our iPod onto into our subconscious mind and we may think to ourselves I don't really like this I see other people playing all these great tunes and having a great time and I want to play that music well you can't until it's been downloaded into your subconscious mind and, and onto your iPod which we can do we do have that Power. We do have that capacity, and for me, uh, one of the most powerful ways of doing that is through meditation and guided meditation. We want to go to those deeper brainwave states, because when we're children, we're in that delta brainwave state until we're two, and then we increase to theta and then to alpha. So as we go into the deeper brainwave states of theta and alpha, that's where the doors open to programming the iPod. That's where we have the capacity to clear out that limiting content that we don't really want us, don't want driving us from behind the scenes and upload that new material that we want to start playing in our lives. It's just, yeah, it is such a good analogy. And you just think, why am I playing this song over and over again? (laughs) (laughs) It was downloaded onto you when you were two. (laughs) Um, So you talk a lot about, um, well, doing, working with the inner child. And uh, we talked about the saboteur. Now let's have a little conversation about the inner child. Why is that work so important? Oh my gosh, Angela, this is one of the most important pieces of the puzzle from my perspective as a spiritual counselor, a holistic life counselor. The inner child, that is the part of us that is connected to the divine. And so many of us, as we were children, experienced hurt, pain, disillusionment, even if we had fantastic parents. There were moments in time where, say for instance, our diapers were dirty and they weren't changed right away. Or perhaps we thought mom was going to come give us a hug And the phone rang and they turned and walked away. And in those moments, we feel confused because we didn't get our needs met. We know we deserve love. You know, we know we're worthy of love. But when we didn't get what we wanted right when we wanted it, we start to not trust the universe. We start to not trust other people. We don't believe we're going to get our needs met. And, of course, most of us have experienced things far more traumatic and dramatic than that. So when we do, it again, programs the subconscious mind. It really, um, it's like playing spin the tail on the donkey when we're kids. We're kind of spun around. We're pushed off in a particular direction. And most of us hit walls and we stumble and we fall and we're hurt. And we go into fear. We go into believing that we don't deserve what it is we want. The love, the prosperity, the support, the unconditional positive regard. And as we have that programming deeply embedded, into our minds and our psyches, it can be really hard to change the trajectory of our lives. And I don't necessarily think we need to go back and comb over every memory. My belief is that if we create a conscious relationship with the inner child here and now, it can do so much to heal us from the inside out, to unravel those deep hurts from the bottom up. So, This is such an important piece of the puzzle in my work, and I see it transform people's lives so quickly. It's 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 literally miraculous. It's been such an important piece of the puzzle. My reality, and when people come to me and say, "I don't want to talk about inner child stuff," 
I sometimes say, well, then, you know, I don't know if we can work together because I feel it is such a foundational and important piece of the puzzle in manifesting the life that we really, really want. So can people do inner child work themselves or do you feel that it's really something that you should uh, work with somebody like yourself, um, but, you know, somebody that can help guide you in that process? Well, in both of my books, I talk about doing inner child healing work, starting the process ourselves. And one of the simple exercises, is, you know, if you've never done this before, is, is left hand, right hand writing. The right hand, you can invite the inner child forward. And with the left hand, you let them answer, you know, with a crayon or a colored pencil of, you know, the color of your inner child's choice you can start the relationship. And I do believe people can do this work, but if they start to feel overwhelmed or unstable, or scared, or simply if they want support, desire support, to find somebody that can help them walk through this. Because it can be complex. It can be confusing terrain to do all alone. It can be done. It's, it's an individual um, situation, though. Everybody needs to figure out for themselves, you know, how am I with this? Am I okay? Do I need support? And, of course, that's a good thing to ask no matter what in your lives. Again, so um, you can start to open the door and if you're, if you're feeling good about what's going on and the revelations, keep doing what you're doing. If you feel like you need support, get a hold of me or somebody else that's familiar with um, the healing journey and ask for what you need. You know, I always say in, in my classes that kind of the hallmark of self-awareness is knowing when you need to ask for help. That's nice. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because and and that is also when you're most willing and able to accept that help is once you've done that level of work to say, okay, I need I need somebody else. I need to bring somebody else in to help me with this. And, and again, that comes back to receiving. Mm-hmm. We need to be open to receive. We need to be able to relax and know that we are worthy of that. We need to be able to ask for the help and then set the intention and then relax and let that in. So, again, that's another component of prosperity. We have to be willing to relax. We have to be willing to surrender. We have to know when um, we are at our limit, we need support because we're not alone. We're all one. You know, none of us can be completely in charge 100% of the time or in control 100% of the time. It's not logical. It's not reality. So, yeah, we have to be able to relax and surrender and ask for what we want and be able to receive it. You know, every year I do this thing with my son. We go, um, you know, when you can paint your own ceramics. Yes. So every year I go and I and I get a mug and I I'm, I paint it and then I put my my intention word on it. So this year it was prosperity. So that every time I go and have my tea or my my morning cup of coffee, I think about prosperity and then I. I imagine like allowing and receiving that. Um, And it's just a really good reminder to keep that, you know, at my level of consciousness that, yes, this is, this is my intention. Do you think that that has some basis in what we're talking about? Oh, for sure. You know, consciously claiming our intentions and affirmations are really important. You know, I would say if you haven't, you know, create that affirmation. I am prosperous. I'm valuable. I'm wonderful. I'm worthy. I'm receiving with grace and gratitude, whatever it is that resonates for you. And I say, write them on sticky notes just to remind yourself to claim it frequently. I do this when I stand in line. If I'm annoyed, like I'm in the grocery store or Starbucks or sitting in traffic and I start to get that, I just start plugging in my affirmations. It's a wonderful way of using that downtime to, you know, program that uh, destination in your vehicle navigation system, so to speak, just as a reminder. So affirmations are absolutely powerful and helpful. I think we want to do that in combination with um, doing the guided meditations and meditations. You want to hit this from a lot of angles. Yes, because those things are sticky in your subconscious. (laughs) They (laughs) They really are sticky. That's a good way of putting it. (laughs) They like to hang around. So um, when we talk about meditation, obviously we've talked about guided meditation, which kind of we're we're targeting uh, whatever that is, whether it's prosperity. But is just meditation in general, even without having that intention towards prosperity, is that part of the puzzle just being there um, in, you know, quiet solitude? For sure. 
Um, that is one of the exercises I will suggest right out of the gate if anybody picks up my book. Just if you don't meditate, just take five minutes in the morning and focus on your breath. You want to still the monkey mind. You want to slow down those busy, busy beta brain waves and go to those deeper theta and alpha states. That's when we have access to the wisdom within, the still small voice within. And some of my greatest revelations have occurred by virtue of meditating and then asking the question that I want the answer to. And it is a different piece of the puzzle than guided meditation. But I think they're both really important and necessary. So I want to share a little story about my work with you. So you, I did a guided meditation about prosperity, and, and through that, you ask about the barrier. And my barrier was this really dense gold heart. And I was like, what is that about? It's not a wall. It's not like a river that I can't cross. It's a really dense. So I came home later, right after my session with you, and I sat in meditation, and I did exactly what you said. I said, you know, can you show me like, what the heck does that mean? I, of course, I asked it in a, a little bit nicer way, but, um, <laughs> oh, you know, what the heck does that gold heart mean? And this was the very first time, usually when I have intuitive hits, kind of, it's just this sort of knowing I get. But this was the very first time I'd ever heard a voice that wasn't, you know, of me. And it says, your heart is in the wrong place. And it was just such an amazing experience to have such, you know, that time with you and then to come home and, and have, you know, just time with me and have such a, a direct, um, you know, connection in that way that I'd never experienced before. So, uh, you know, I'm a huge proponent of, of meditation as well. Mm, that's um, a wonderful story. Yes, and you know, I'm still unraveling things from that session because after I, I saw you and then I did that meditation, I made sure that I wrote everything down. And it's amazing some of the symbols and all of that that, that came out of it that still is kind of unfolding. Um, lots of it came to me right after, but there's still things that I was like, oh, that's interesting. We're about 30 seconds to break. I just, you mentioned that in your, in your book is how that your subconscious mind likes to use images and symbols and all of that. And I think it's so, uh, I don't know. I just, I just love that. It's kind of like this, this puzzle that you get to, that you get to unfold. So I think that's really amazing. When we get back, we're going to do a segment that I like to call bite-sized brilliance. So sometimes we have these big conversations and we can talk about things energetically. And this is when we bring it on home and, and give you some step-by-step -step tools and tips as well as get a little bit practical. So we are going to do that when we are a turn here on Entanglement Radio with Angela Levesque right here on Ohm Times Radio. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. I Om FM. Hi, I'm Katrina Kavanagh, host of the I Am Wisdom radio show. I Am Wisdom is about the connection between mind work and energy work, spirituality and living a wonderful life. Looking forward to sharing each Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with you. Host your show on I Om FM, the radio network of Om Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. The Laying Out of Hands Healing Radio Show is about treating the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. Join me, Charles Smith, as I share life balancing measures such as nutrition and spiritual practices to help you take charge of your own health and wellness every Thursday at 7 p.m., on Ohm Times Radio. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Ohm Times. 
All right, we are back here on Entanglement Radio. I'm the host, Angela Lebeck, and we have an amazing guest, um, relationship and prosperity expert, Dr. Tammy Balashevsky. Uh, this is a little segment here called By Times Brilliance, and it's brought to you by Hestia Health, specializing in mind-body weight loss, awareness development, and energy healing. HestiaHealth.com, calm mind, open heart, aware life. So this is, for those of you who don't know, Hestia, she was all, she was the goddess of of heart and home and uh, she was all about getting your center in order first before you could go and spread your light elsewhere so she is actually the image of the eternal flame so that's why I thought it would be she would be a great um, energy to sponsor this segment where we do uh, like to take these concepts that we've been talking about and give you some real life tips and tools on how to start um, your prosperity journey today. So we've already talked about meditation, which I know that um, probably Tammy and I couldn't mention enough. So meditation. (laughs) But Tammy, you also get really practical in your book. You do talk about um, budgets, for example. How how important is it to have that? Well, it's hard to know how much money we need and how much money we really we we have to know where we are to get where we want to go. So we have to be able to be very logical and linear with the practice. And it's not the most fun part, part for me. I'm definitely a right brainer, but um, it wasn't until I really took responsibility to figure out, okay, let's put it down on a spreadsheet. Let's figure out how much I'm spending on everything that I have in my life to figure out where I want to go. You know, I wanted to increase my um, income by double, but let me figure out where I am right now. What is it I need? And then what is it that I desire? So I wanted to get really clear about every dime that I was spending and then get very clear about the money that I wanted to make, get that solid foundation and build from there. So yeah, I walk people through a process to support them in creating a very comprehensive budget. And then I support them in expanding from there. Uh, one thing that I have done, because I am more of a left brainer, I have a, I love spreadsheets, is that I titled instead of calling it my budget, I call it my abundance allocation. <laughs> I changed. Now the that's name. a good idea. <laughs> I kind of want to go back and change that in my book now. <laughs> <laughs> Because I thought, you know, I, there's some connotations around, um, you know, there's a very practical budgeting is very practical, and like you said, you need to know and and you need to be able to get clear not only energetically, intentionally, but also just pragmatically. But I, there's some connotation about budget that I didn't really enjoy. So I was like, this is my abundance allocation. So uh, I like that. And you also talk about something that's really interesting. That this is like a a tool or tip that people could do. Um, right away is tithing, which is interesting. Again, prosperity is about giving generously and receiving graciously. And tithing is a subject that's brought up in the Bible, and it's the only place in the Bible that says, prove me wrong. Bring Mm -hmm. all of the grains to the storehouse, share, open the windows. You're going to receive so much abundance by giving 10% of your first fruits, 10% of the crops right away. And then more and more is going to come in. You're not going to be able to hold all of it. You're going to be so prosperous. And it is the biggest sticking point for most people in regards to creating prosperity because it's not necessarily logical. But we have to trust that the universe is on our side. We have to believe that God wants us to succeed and be prosperous. And what I say all the time is everything that we have, everything that we have is all on loan. Everything, our bodies, our homes, our cars, our children, our finances, everything's on loan from the universe. So to be able to say, you know what, thank you, Lord God of all creation. Thank you, divine intelligence, for everything in my life. And this is how I'm going to prove to you, show you, commit to you. I'm going to give the 10% of my first fruits to whatever feeds me spiritually. And it doesn't necessarily have to be to an organized church or religion. It could be to somebody that says exactly what you need to hear exactly when you need to hear it. And it can be strange. It's like, you know what, I'm tithing to you. And you might have to explain a little bit. You know, I want to give 10% to where I'm spiritually fed and you really spiritually fed me today. So at the end of the month, that's really fun for me. It's like, okay, I have this money coming in. Where am I fed? 
who brought me joy? Where did I feel connected to my own soul? And then I write checks out and I feel like I'm just kind of just spreading the prosperity, you know, sharing the glitter with the world. And it's, it's really joyful once you get into that habit and you will find your prosperity expanding and increasing in ways that are beyond logical comprehension. And so I want to be clear that, and, and you're quite clear in your book when you say that tithing is not the same thing as um, giving to charity. No. I mean, if we see somebody standing on the corner and, and it says we'll work for food, we may have compassion for that person. And that's great. And all giving is good. But tithing is where you're spiritually fed. It's not that we're giving from sympathy or compassion. We're giving from a place where it's like, you know, we were acknowledging God is the source of my good. And so, yeah, there are two very different things. But again, all giving is good. So in your book, you do give 30 suggestions to really get started. So, you know, we have a couple of minutes left. Is there another one that you that we haven't covered that you just think is a great one for my listeners um, for this Bite Size Brilliant segment? I think focusing on everything in our life that we're grateful for as a sign of gratitude. Often we can think, I don't have enough, and we can be frustrated at that. But when we really look around, that we have a roof over our head, that we have enough food in our stomachs, that we have a car or a computer, we're already in the top you know, 5% of the world. So if you really start focusing on what you're grateful for, this opens the door to start manifesting even more to be grateful for. Gratitude is a really powerful way of attracting prosperity. And also another thing as a mandala facilitator, if you just close your eyes and ask for the perfect healing symbol for you to start attracting and manifesting your prosperity. You mentioned it earlier, the subconscious mind speaks in the language of symbols. So if you do these two things, start focusing on everything you're grateful for, ask your subconscious mind for the healing symbol of prosperity and then maybe create it, you're going to start opening the door to attracting more and more of what you deserve and desire in the world. Oh, I love that. I, you know, it was interesting that you said in your book that some spiritual teachers believe that the energy of gratitude um, is even, I don't know if you use the word more important yes. or than, than love, which I it thought is, is more amazing. the energy of the universe than even love. Appreciation and gratitude is even more the energy of God and creation than even love. So as we tap into those states of appreciation and gratitude, we're literally lining up with the creator of all things. I love it. You're giving me chills, lady. (laughs) (laughs) It's fun, isn't it? (laughs) It is. Um, So we actually just have, you know, we have five minutes left. And I know that you have a some things to offer the listeners and all of, um, I want to give you the opportunity to share where people can find your book and all of that great stuff. Yes. If people go to my website, I have a free manifesting report, the seven reasons you're not manifesting and 13 steps, how to start manifesting the life of your dreams that I also have a seven minute morning guided meditation that's available for you. I also have a book about making friends with the subconscious mind, such an important piece of the puzzle and manifesting what we want in our lives. So a lot of free, cool, empowering stuff on my website. And if people buy one of my books, either Manifesting Love or Manifesting Prosperity on my website, I will give them three MP3 guided meditations of their choice. All you have to do is say that you heard me on Entanglement with Angela. So that is a $25 value for nothing. So uh, you buy the book and you get that many guided meditations as a gift. And then I want to be in touch with people. I want to hear their stories and support them in any way I can. So yeah, if you don't have any money, go on my website and get the free stuff. If you have a little money, get the book. And if you uh, want the guided meditations, I also have programs. I'm just uploading my prosperity program. I did a six-week course with people that really supported them in getting on that solid ground and opening up to prosperity. And that's going to be available in the next couple of weeks. So I'm super excited about sharing this material to help people go deeper and higher 